Let's open the Terror Prime Weapons Locker. Greetings, my fellow Saber fans. I am Count Arcanus, and I welcome you to this TPLA Weapons Locker on the Saber Forge Bane lightsaber. This is the first curved hilt design that Saber Forge have produced. More are in the pipeline, but this is the first one they did. It is based, as far as I understand, on the uh, written description in the Bane novels of the lightsaber that he was given at the Sith Academy, which was basically a curved lightsaber with a claw on the end. It's a description that leaves a lot of interpretation possible, and I have to say that I really like the interpretation that Saber Forge have made of that description. It is surprisingly light, actually, for, for a hilt. It may appear quite chunky, and indeed I have had some comments to the effect that it looks very, very uh, chunky and it looks quite large. It is quite long from the end of the claw to the end of the pommel. It's some 15 inches in length, a uh, little over. So it is quite long, but because of the curve, you don't really notice it when you're using it. Um, another interesting feature about this saber is the fact that it has this particular kind of curve. Now, curved hilt lightsabers are not new, and other companies have indeed uh, made them several, in fact. One of the things that you tend to find, or has tended to happen in the past, is that the curve kind of follows after where you would naturally grip the saber. So largely, you don't really feel the effect of the curve when you're using it. My experience with this saber, and I've had it for a short while now, is that that isn't the case. Where it curves is pretty well exactly where you would put your hand. It's got a very, very interesting design in so much that it has these end pieces here and here. This one being essentially the front of the guard from the claw, and this one being the back of the, the claw. The, the way this is constructed is very, very interesting because it is actually cast rather than, than a sort of a, a, a pipe that has been bent. This is cast in two halves. Uh, it's extremely highly detailed, as you can see. There's um, just so many details. It's really hard to go through them all. It's got an incredibly detailed pommel. Of course, it's vented for sound because this has a, a, um, a sound card in it, which is the Spark Color 2, in actual fact, by uh, Nigon Electronic Systems. Uh, and it has this, as I say, it has this really interesting construction. You've got the two halves, left and right, and then the pommel is not screw on. The pommel is held on by these two retention screws, one on this side and one on this side through the Covertech wheel. The shroud, the emitter shroud, similarly, two screws. Then you have screws internally that hold it together. And this claw, which runs almost the full length apart from this tiny little piece of the pommel at the end, is integral to that whole construction. It actually helps to hold the whole thing together. What's very interesting about this is one-handed, when you hold it, you're right on that curve. You can hold it further forwards, so you get less of a curve. Two-handed, you can go right the way forward to this lip, and then the other hand right the way back to the other lip. It gives a very interesting two-handed grip. Obviously, as you can see, it's on a tilt. So, for people who are extremely used to using straight hilts for two-handed, that probably will feel a little weird. I'm fortunate, I guess, in the sense that coming from a, a, a non-weapons background, 
sword play was completely new to me anyway. So I, I'd had only a, a limited amount of time to get used to using a straight hilt. So I didn't find the transition terribly difficult. It is ironic that what it says, if you've, if you've read the Bane novels, what, it, what they actually describe in there of the curved hilt making some techniques more difficult and some techniques easier does, at least from a, a relative novice's point of view, seem to be true. I found with this sabre that some things feel a lot easier, a lot more comfortable, and some things feel a lot harder. Uh, it, it, it is a little bit of a, of a trade-off, but nonetheless, it, I, it is an incredibly comfortable hilt to hold and to use. And, as I say, very, very light. It's also very, very slim. The diameter around the hilt, including the claw, is only about four and three quarter inches. Now, if you compare that, for example, with uh, an Ultra Saber's Dominic's version three, which I also have, that's five inches at the widest point. So this is a really, really slim, hilt very lightweight as i say and it it is extremely comfortable so let's get on to the the goodies inside Looked it up and as i say this has nigon's spark color 2 uh soundboard in it i've got it set here um on red i'll put the blade in the moment and you'll see what that looks like uh we have two flashing lit AV switches. The top one is the on off switch and the one at the bottom is the auxiliary switch. Some really interesting and nice goodies with this which I'll go through again more with the, with the blade in place. You have blaster block, you have uh, and it's interesting the blaster block actually chains blocks together so once you press it and you keep rotating, it'll continue to, to block, it'll continue to, to, to blast. Uh, we have blaster block, but we also have a lockup. Now I've chosen to have this in uh, three colours, well, two colours which mix. Red is one of them, blue is the other. And it has a, a, a neat little thing which is a little bit difficult to do without the blade actually, because I've been practicing it with. You can actually change colours without changing font. As you can see, I've gone over to blue. It's a little bit of getting. And then we have purple. So, and then obviously, back to red. So, let's have a look at what this looks like with a blade in. And we'll give you more of an idea of, of that. Okay, so we have the blade in now. This is uh, a Sabre Forge version 4 blade. It's 27 inches in length, which a lot of people might think of as being actually quite small, but I find for this Sabre, it works brilliantly well. Uh, I have tried it with a 32. Um, the 32 is, a, a, is monstrous in length in this and because the hilt is so light having such a lot a, a lot of blade really does you know make a lot of difference to it being forward heavy uh the 27 is is kind of nice it balances with the 27 inch blade just fractionally in front of the retention screws in the shroud again the interesting thing about this uh saber and the way it works is because of where you hold it in your hand you think the balance point is up here there is a good four fingers between your grip and that balance point and that's from the 27 inch blade the longer the blade the further forward the balance point is going to go so it then starts to get very front heavy if that's the sort of thing you like then you can obviously experiment with with longer blades for me personally i like the 27 now, obviously, with the Spark Color 2 soundboard, we have six sound fonts, which are Father's Son, Father's Essence, Episode 1, 
Essence Episode 1, and the interesting thing is to change through the fonts, you have to press the auxiliary button twice, because if you press it once, it simply re-announces the font that you're on. Es Essence Episode 2. Essence Episode 2 is font number 3. 501 Commando is is uh, sound font number four. All Too Easy, which is a very uh, Darth Vader kind of sound, is the fifth one. And then the final one is Standard Issue. One of my personal favorites is... Essence, Essence, Episode 2. Essence, Episode 2, which you'll notice on this one, the blade doesn't flicker. Uh, they are set at the moment in lots of different ways. Um, some of them have blade flicker set, some of them don't. And with it having an SD card, you can take that out and you can put it into your computer and you can play around with the settings for blade flicker, for setting different colors to start on each font, all sorts of crazy stuff. The usual stuff, if you've had either a Hero Tier Saber Forge Saber before or one of, you know, one of the Sabers that has sort of crystal focus, crystal shard, that kind of thing in it, you'll you'll have you'll have played with that kind of thing before. Again, you have the normal blade colour. You have the clash, which it has to be said, I've got the settings on here set quite low for clash, so it's a little awkward to get. It's set very low in fact. But it basically what you end up with, I've got this set with three colours, with red, with blue, and then the mixed colour is purple. So the blaster block on this font is purple. So there it is. As I said, as you rotate, it continues that blast, that deflection. If you hold it down, there's the blue. So you get the, um, on this font it's kind of force lightning on a lightsaber blade kind of effect, obviously it's a dark side font, and as you can see it's incredibly easy to move around, very very comfortable. And then you have the dual phase function, which is, I'm still working on this, a lot of people have been having difficulty with this, the reason being is that the card is mounted down here. So it's this axis here which must rotate in order to change colours, not up here. If you're in a straight hilt, the whole hilt just rotates on, on a single axis. It's a little harder with this one, but it can, it can be done. There it goes. Into blue, this is the blue colour now. With the blue colour set, Again, blaster blocks are purple. Now the lockup is red. And the clash I've also got set to red as well. Move across into purple. Now this is both the blue and the red dies on together. So this is the 12 watt color. Uh, it is incredibly bright. In person, it, it, it's blinding. It's I, I love how bright this thing is. And here, we have the red, plaster blocks, and blue on lock up. And then we go back to red. So, that's just a quick look at the Sabre Forge Bane lightsaber. This one, as I say, is actually in a custom paint finish. Um, I got this one from Daniel Lane uh, of Titles Ridge Customs and Sabre Forge. And I did request that he do some interesting things with the paint finish. So I've got a very polished chrome shroud at the front here. The body is um, a powder coated silver. In fact, the whole rest of it of the saber is that powder coated silver. And we've got some some brass cover tech and some gold accents just to sort of sparkle it up a little bit. Um, ironically, this is offered in a number of different finishes. They offer it in uh, a weathered finish, in 
uh, so the whole thing is kind of black and then weathered. Uh, they also have options where the pommel and emitter shroud can be one color and the body another color. So you could have black body, silver, shroud and pommel, or you can reverse that and have black shroud and pommel with a silver body. The, the weathered finish has turned out to be the most popular thus far, but I've never been one to follow fashions as it were, so I, I rather went with the silver one, I enjoy that. So that's a quick look at the Bane lightsaber. Um, so it just remains me to thank you for joining me and that you'll join us for further episodes of the TPLA Weapons Locker. And may the force be with you.